okay let's see how does a decision tree split on categorical features there are two types of categorical features nominal and ordinal so in the ordinal features there will be an inherent order that is associated with the categories for example let's say we consider a category called weather so the values in this category can be high medium and low so even though high medium and low are categories still there is an inherent order associated with them that is we can say that high is greater than medium and medium is greater than low so when there is an inherent order associated with the categories we call them as the ordinal features so in case of ordinal features we can we can just follow the approach that we have discussed for the split on continuous features we can just follow the same approach but we cannot follow the same approach for the nominal features so when i say nominal these are categories without any inherent order associated with them for example if you consider a categorical feature such as color you know there isn't any inherent order we cannot say that color red is greater than color blue or color green is less than color yellow so there isn't any inherent order that is associated with the nominal features okay so now let's, let's try to understand how does a decision tree split on nominal categorical features okay and here i am again assuming the binary decision trees because like i mentioned in the previous video there are some variants of decision trees which allows us to make multi way splits but in this video we are only assuming the binary decision trees that is only binary splits okay so the first step is to get all the distinct values in a feature okay first we get all the distinct values in a categorical feature the second step for each partition we make a split and compute the weighted average impurity in case of classification or the sum of squared errors in the case of class in the case of regression okay so here the only difference between the previous approach and here is that earlier we were trying to make the splits for every value in the continuous feature whereas here i'm saying something called partition for each partition we are going to make the splits and compute these impurities let's try to understand what exactly the partition mean okay and also the third step piece we select the split which has the least weighted average impurity or the sum of squared errors okay so now let's take an example let's see there is a feature f2 that i have defined here and the subscript 2 refers to the number of distinct values in a feature if you look at this list of categories there are only two distinct values those are a and b okay so whenever we have a feature with two distinct values then there will be only one partition that is possible okay so if you just try to understand the same thing in terms of continuous features so it can be something like this so we write something like f is equal to a so if f is equal to a is true that is s we go to the left branch and if f is equal to a is not true that is no we go to the right branch so i am just rewriting the same thing in a different manner that is instead of writing s and no i am just writing the direct category on the condition so that is if f2 is equal to a we go to the left side of the tree if f2 is equal to b we go to the right side of the tree so this is only the one combination that is possible for two categories okay for two distinct values in a categorical feature now let's try to extend the same example further okay so instead of considering the categorical variable with two distinct values let's consider the categorical variable with three distinct values okay so if we consider a categorical variable categorical variable with three distinct values let's say a b and c in this case the total number of combinations or partitions possible are three you can see here a b comma c is one combination b a comma c is another combination c a comma b is another combination okay now let's try to extend the same thing for four distinct values that is for categories a b c and d so in this case the total number of partitions possible are seven you can see all the distinct combinations here okay so now what do we do so once we define these partitions you know 
we make the splits and try to compute either the weighted average impurity or the sum of squared errors. We compute these measures for every combination here. Okay. And, and we choose the one and we choose the one which has the least weighted average impurity or the least sum of squared errors. Okay. Let's say this is the combination that has resulted in less impurity values. Okay. In that case, we split feature F4 by saying is equal to D as left side branch and not equal to D as right side branch. So when I say not equal to D, it's nothing but the other remaining three categories that those are A, B, and C. Okay. So now if you just try to generalize the same concept for a categorical variable with K distinct values, then the number of partitions possible are 2 power K minus 1 minus 1. Okay. So the partitioning concept is alone it, uh, new here. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's pretty much everything same as that we have discussed in the continuous feature splits. Thank you.